Hi, everybody, and welcome to uh, what for me anyways, a back to work Thursday here at KGW TV on the second day of January. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill coming to you from the uh, Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, Washington area. And I, I think the number one story over on the left is uh, we're just in a really little wet weather pattern that will be with us through the day into the night on Saturday. And then we change gears and we go on a run of dry weather, and I'll break all that down for you. But on the left, here you can see the solid cloud flow that's just streaming up into us. There's a, a front coming in Friday morning. There's another system on Saturday. We're going to see several shots of fairly steady widespread rain at times move up into the area. And again, we'll break that down. In terms of a weather advisory, the only one we have is for the Cascades. And this starts at 7 p.m. tonight and goes into tomorrow morning, including the Mount Hood area. And while there will be snow, uh, the Weather Service, I, I think, reading their discussion, primarily issuing this because there is at least the threat that there could be some areas that have some cold weather trapped as snow levels rise. And that would be rain falling into freezing temperatures. And there could be some icing in scattered locations along the Cascades. Um, and out toward parts of uh, eastern Oregon, up into the Columbia Basin. The gorge, Hood River has been at 32 earlier this morning with a mix of some light snow at times reported, but those temperatures are expected to warm, and I think the gorge will hold above freezing tonight. So anyway, we'll get into all of this as we get uh, we start off the new year with uh, a fairly wet weather pattern overall. Quick shout out to my uh, sponsor, the Momentous Wealth Podcast. Again, this is a, a library for you to Choose or select a number of investment topics meant to educate you. Listen on Apple Podcasts, listen on Spotify from local firm, Momentous Wealth Management, licensed in both Oregon and in Washington. Okay, well, let's look at the water vapor this time around. Here's that big batch of moisture. You can see it's just streaming up into Oregon and Washington. The back edge of this is a front uh, you can see the trailing low and the cold front is right back in here that will break steady rain that comes in overnight tonight into scattered showers eventually on Friday. And then there's another system that would throw some moisture our way. I, I think that's Friday if I misspoke. This is the front that comes in Friday and breaks everything into scattered rain showers Friday afternoon. Another system will bring us some rain during the day on Saturday. All right, pretty active flow. Here's the... Um, National Blended Model, their future radar product. This is meant to mimic what the radar could look like in the coming hours. So starting off this morning, you know, we've just had scattered light rain showers out there this morning. We are watching rain gather to our south. Here it is at around 10 o'clock this morning, raining up through Roseburg, the steady rain starting to move into Eugene. Here we are going into one o'clock this afternoon. Now it's interesting because some models take the steady rain area and they push it up north of the Columbia River, so through Portland, while this particular model basically keeps Portland near to just north of the steady rain. And certainly as you get up into southwest Washington, you find either drying or increasingly very light rain totals. So this is this afternoon at 4 p.m. And then there's a bit of a break. And then here comes the rain. This will be 10 o'clock tonight. And this is one pattern here that all models agree, that late evening through midnight tonight into tomorrow morning, this is widespread steady rain for hours and hours that lifts from south to north up through our entire region. You can see it all the way out over eastern Oregon in the blues and eastern Washington uh, as well. And then the front comes through tomorrow. This is around 10 o'clock. I have the front clearing the I-5 corridor at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then once that happens, here's one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, Friday. We've got the heavy rain shield up to our north. We've got scattered showers where you see the breaks in the green for the remainder of the afternoon into the night. And that's as far as this particular model uh, goes to. But there will be more rain coming in during the day on Saturday. So you put it all together. This is the American GFS model showing you how much total precipitation that we could be getting. Now, some of this will be snow up over the Cascades. This is melted total precipitation. So here we are this afternoon at 4 p.m. showing heavy rain down to our south. This shows already over an inch of rain down in the North Bend Coos Bay area. Uh, 83 one hundredths of an inch inland down in southwestern Oregon, while Portland is setting at about a tenth of an inch with most of today's significant measurable rainfall staying to the south. 
Now watch the rain pick up with the numbers jumping. This is the widespread rain that comes in overnight tonight into Friday morning with showers continuing Friday afternoon. So you put all of this together and you have a half of an inch of rain in Portland, about a half of an inch up in Seattle. This shows a little bit more, maybe six, seven tenths of an inch in Salem, um, half of an inch plus up in Astoria. And then you get to the rain bullseye, which is south of Newport in southern Lincoln County, getting down into Lane County, down into Reedsport, uh, Bandon, North Bend, Coos Bay, Brookings, shows over three inches of rain could fall along that part of the south, southern Oregon coast. And amounts jump well over an inch of rain once you get down into Lane County and then continue south. Also, and this is important to know, we've been battling drought conditions, not here on the west side of our state over the last handful of years, but in parts of central and eastern Oregon and Washington. Look how widespread all this rain is. This shows 63, 107 inch out in parts of Baker County. So that's terrific, terrific news. Absolutely. Now, again, this doesn't show you breaks in the rain. This is just accumulative rain totals from this morning, Thursday through Friday afternoon. And now let's see how much rain comes in during the day Saturday. Remember, rain picks up Saturday daytime. Here's in a Saturday evening. And now we've added another half of an inch or more in Portland with the rain total getting up above 1.20. And now we're up over two inches down in Eugene. And we're potentially over four inches in parts of southwestern Oregon. After this, I think Sunday, any rain will be minute. And they were completely dry uh, to start next week. So here's the surface map. This is the American GFS model, the same one we just looked at. This is this afternoon. So as this low in front approaches the coast, it's, it's producing a south wind flow. It's actually bringing warm air advection up through the area. So it's this push of warm air that's producing the waves of rain that we're going to get today and also uh, into overnight into Friday morning. Now the front, this is uh, the map Friday afternoon. And then we go into Saturday. So Saturday we see scattered showers develop. Here's surface high trying to build in. There's a weak system offshore, but we will get some moisture riding up on the, the north side or the back side of this high into Portland on Saturday. Now on Sunday, notice, see the, the numbers get lower in the enclosed circles. These are isobars, lines of equal pressure. There's a 20, there's a 1016. So this is a weak low that sits offshore Sunday. Some of the models give us some rainfall from this inland Sunday. Other models do not. But once that dissolves, now we go on this run, see all the high pressure areas of no rain chance at all. Monday, Tuesday, into at least Wednesday of next week, and maybe into Thursday. Look how broad the high is. There's the Nick system, which could bring us rain starting Friday morning. Now, if you look to the East Coast, you see these lows. Here's a cold front that comes down into the Tennessee Valley, into Arkansas, and then kind of stalls out over Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle. And I point that out because all of this air with these highs shooting down on the back side of that is colder air from Canada. And this does show another little weak weather system up in the upper Midwest on Wednesday afternoon. But we're certainly dry with high pressure blanketing our entire area. So we talked about this last time that we spoke. You know, the, the question is, when or do we, pardon me, will we get into any of that colder air dropping down across the nation's upper Midwest and the Rocky Mountain states? Or will we stay fairly mild through next week with ridging over the Pacific uh, Northwest? Here are the uh, surface temperature forecasts for today. These are actually current numbers, pardon me. So current numbers, this 8.30 local time here on this Thursday morning. Only 17 in Minneapolis, St. Paul, below zero up in North Dakota. And freezing temperatures down through St. Louis and certainly back into Colorado. Okay, now let's see what this, this is this cold air. So the purple, right here is the borderline along the, the, the Rocky Mountain state. So this is correct. We don't get into the cold air. But look what's happening all the way through Sunday. Cold air dominating at least the upper Midwest and in parts of the Northeast and parts of the Rocky Mountain states. This would be a high Sunday of 19 degrees in Des Moines, Iowa. Again, here's the dividing line along the Rocky Mountains. As forecasters, we always watch if you get a prolonged outbreak of cold weather coming out of Canada along the Rocky Mountains, we always watch this carefully because at times the weather models will keep us on the warm side and then they would turn out to be wrong. And we actually, things shift enough that we get east winds picking up and this cold air shooting through the gorge. So right now the models are not really showing that happening so much, 
but just note is something that forecasters are watching. Okay, one thing we were watching earlier this morning, right now it's 34 degrees in Hood River. Earlier this morning, it was 32. Still light snow being reported at the airport, but you can see it's above freezing now and there's no snow on I-84. You folks should be warming Hood River up to about 40 degrees today. Let's go ahead and click on the Hood River forecast. This shows 38 today, steady tonight, 40 Friday. So we think that's just all rain in the gorge moving forward. Again, you can check these updates on my uh, Columbia River Gorge page, which is on my weather site portlandweather.com. Of course, we're watching, um, did I skip? I skipped over the Cascades. Let's go back to the Cascades. Here we go. 29 currently in Timberline, 34 Meadows, 32 at Skee-Ball. Notice their lifts are operating. The bases are out of sight. 106 on the ground, Timberline, 106 Meadows, 54 Skee-Ball, completely open. Mal Hood site specific, still more than 130% of normal snowpack for this time of the year. So really healthy snowpack. And if you are traveling, government camps, 34 degrees, mainly wet. Santiam, entirely wet. Willamette, entirely wet. There's been icy patches along I-84 out through the Blues and into Baker County this morning, where at times I think a section of I-84 may have been closed due to that. But here on the west side, no problem. Siskiyou Summit is just all wet. In terms of snow levels, I want to point this out. 5,000 foot snow level today going up to 40. That's just rain over Cascade Passes. Snow level tonight, 6,000 feet. I think it's likely, I could be wrong, but I think it's likely that government camp and most of the Cascade Passes will hold above freezing tonight, meaning it would be just rain with a high Friday of 42. And then when you get above the passes and up through five and even to 6,000 feet, you've got heavier snow that falls where there could be eight inches of snow. Some of that will be Tonight, before snow levels rise, some of it will be on the back edge of the fronts coming through. But remember, the Weather Service believes there could be some icy patches and scattered locations overnight tonight into Friday morning. So check conditions if you are traveling. Saturday, it's all snow at past level, 3,500 to 4,000 foot snow amounts. Some of the modeling is starting to show signs that this Saturday forecast of 5 to 12 inches of snow I might have to back off on that. Maybe the moisture is not that strong, but there will be snow Saturday, then primarily dry on Sunday, Monday going into next week. This is on my Mount Hood weather page. Again, uh, portlandweather.com, courtesy of Hillcrest Sports Shop with all of your boarding and skiing needs, including rentals and sales uh, located in Gresham. Okay, we've worked our way through that. Let's go around the horn real quick. It's just a wet pattern through Saturday. Again, at times showery, at times steady rain. Medford, the same. Wet weather all the way into Saturday. High temperatures around 50 degrees. And there's the dry weather down in southern Oregon Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Remember down in southwestern Oregon, that's the bullseye for heaviest rains, by the way. Okay. I want to click on Newport at the coast because uh, before I forget, you've got showers and periods of steady rain today. It's in the 50s. Not much wind during the day today, but as that front approaches Friday morning, overnight tonight into Friday morning along the Oregon coast, there could be a period of south gust to about 40 or 45. That would not be strong enough for any watches, warnings, or advisories, but just take a note. And then the winds kick more to the west and they calm down Friday afternoon behind the front. Pretty wet into Saturday overall. This does show likely rain on Sunday at the coast and then drying out to start next week of temperatures continuing to be pretty mild. In Salem, capital of Oregon, of course, 50 today, a rainy pattern into Saturday. Overnight lows, mild. Daytime highs, 50 or better. Chance of showers on Sunday that may or may not happen. I do not believe there's a rain chance on Monday. You folks will be dry on Tuesday. And I don't really think there's a rain chance on Wednesday either. Daytime highs around 50 degrees. Uh, okay, let's jump it up to Seattle real quick. Let's see, this has got to be wet. I, I always like to say that. Come on, come on, Seattle. Here we go. Rainy today, Friday, Saturday. Rain chances on Sunday, then dry on Monday. And even up in Seattle, I think it could be dry on Tuesday. Daytime highs, most days shy of 50. Overnight lows well above freezing. And here's my seven-day forecast for the Rose City. So rain at times today. We do have east winds coming out of the gorge 15 to 30 miles prior. Those winds will be from the east out of the gorge until the front comes in Friday morning. And then Friday would break into scattered showers. Winds turn more to the southwest to the west. Any noticeable breezes in the morning will calm during the day in the afternoon and be like more west of 15. Saturday rain at times. One of the updates could be backing off on how much rain we get Saturday. That's something I'll look at when I see the new data come in later today. I think Sunday, remember that weak system offshore, could have some showers, but overall mainly dry. And I don't have any rain chance for most of the Willamette Valley 
on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week. Some of you, now east winds will start to kick up next week as we get some cooler weather with east winds coming through the gorge. Um, and if you don't have east winds at your place, if you're in a calm spot, you probably will get into some freezing nights next week as well. Something else we're watching. Okay, that's it for now. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. This has been your uh, weather update for a Thursday. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. That helps me out, and I will talk to you soon.